In this episode of Interviews from the Backseat, we meet with sports journalist Kelsey Winger. Can't build your identity on something that's unstable. I think that the world just needs college football. Welcome back to Interviews from the Back Seat. I'm very excited to have uh, somebody that's well known here in Atlanta and very honored to have her, Miss Kelsey Winger. Uh, she is best known as being a sideline reporter for the Atlanta Braves. Uh, she also is a freelance reporter for the NBA, the NHL, uh, college football, college baseball, basketball. <laughs> you name it, I you will name do it. it. You've done it, right? <laughs> Um, so very talented, uh, incredible individual as well. Um, just getting to know her through other things. Uh, she's uh, just an amazing person. So thank you. Um, thank you so much for being on interviews from the back seat. Yeah. So of course, I'm impressed that you're taking the initiative to do all of this because this is a lot of work. Yes, I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> we all are. We all are. So well, thank you. So first question: um, How has COVID uh, affected you as a sports journalist? Um, I think it's affected everybody in the sports industry because there were no sports for so long and this is just unprecedented. You know, right. I mean, we've never seen where every single league, every single team, every single conference is halted. Um, and a lot of people in the sports world are freelance, which mm -hmm. means, you know, you get paid by the event. So many people weren't getting paid, um, which kind of put me in a predicament because I'm in the middle of a job search. and the industry just completely halted. Um, no one's hiring, everybody's laying off because they're not making money because there are no live sports. Luckily, live sports are starting to come back. So mm -hmm. you're seeing it pick up a little bit, um, but it has affected so many different industries. And as you know, and especially in the sports industry, just because we've never seen where everything just, I mean, I was working the NBA broadcast for the Hawks the night that the league got suspended um, wow. when Rudy Gobert tested positive for COVID yeah. and they found out right before the game started, pulled the teams off the court. Um, and we were on the air for two hours for Hawks Live post game show explaining that the NBA season has shut down completely. And at that point, we thought it might be, you know, for a week or a month. Right. Um, and it obviously took them three or right. four months to get started back up. But uh, it has been it's really affected you know my my career and everybody else's career in the sports industry right yeah wow incredible mm -hmm. so what struggles are you facing right now and how are you overcoming those struggles right now i mean just that the the job search you know is completely halted mm -hmm. uh the, all the industries who all the networks you would hope would be hiring for college football or whatever it may be they are not hiring and they're laying off and with all of the games that they had lost they're having to fulfill contracts of employees they already have right. so there's not even opportunities you know to do freelance gigs because those are going to the people who are already on staff um, so it's just been a season of life of learning to be patient and be still and understand that um, it's out of our hands and it's our timing is not the best timing. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very strong in my faith and that has really allowed me to grow and be able to self-reflect and understand that um, I, I trust in God's timing for my career and, and what's going to come next. And you can stress and stress and stress as much as you want, but it's a pandemic and we don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's forced me to stop going 100 miles per hour and take a step back and just sit and sit still and just mm -hmm. trust in it's all going to play out you know how it should so it's been a tough season but now it's right. becoming one where i'm starting to see the benefits of it and understand that there is purpose in this season mm -hmm. for me um and you kind of get out of this like sad woe is me pity state into being like look this is where i'm at this is what's going on and i'm going to make the best of it so that's that's kind of where my my mentality has been the last couple yeah. of months. That's awesome. It took a minute to get there, I'm sure. No, <laughs> more than a minute, like three months, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but we did it. <laughs> well, that, that's a big inspiration for other people. So mm -hmm. thank you. Um, so you have a, 
a lot of friends and you're a big insider with a lot of sports figures. Um, how are they uh, taking on COVID and what are they doing in the meantime? Yeah, I mean, what was rough is that gyms were shut down and that mm -hmm. included for professional athletes. They couldn't access the wow. facilities. Um, so you would see on social media, I mean, even now, if MLB is back right now, and if you follow any of the you know accounts on on Twitter, or Instagram, you see the videos. The guys when these teams have the outbreaks, because MLB is one of mm -hmm. the leagues that did not decide to go with a bubble format. So these teams are traveling from city to city, right. and they're having more outbreaks than the NHL or the NBA, who opted to have their entire postseason mm -hmm. and finish of the regular season in a bubble. But you'll see at MLB when these guys are quarantined in their hotel because their team has an outbreak they'll put their mattress they'll stand it up vertically against the wall and they're throwing into the mattress against oh, the wall really? because they cannot leave yeah. their hotel room like their yeah. food is delivered to the room they cannot leave their actual room right. um, but when the wow. shutdown was going on a lot of athletes just had to get creative with working out from home which if you're into fitness we all had to do that you couldn't go to right. academy and find one dumbbell because they were all sold out um, right. so you had to get very creative with your workouts they probably had to watch what they were eating a little bit more because you're not as active as you were but they got so much time with their families that they would have never gotten you know so I think that was a positive from it um, but it definitely affected the athletes just as much as it affected those of us who just work in the industry on or behind the camera um, yeah. but just getting very creative with how you're gonna stay in shape and especially like the NBA when you're in this season and it shuts down and then you're picking up and you're finishing the regular season there's no warm-up time you know you just right. go right back into it so you have to find a way to stay in game shape but it's been funny to see their creativity just um, come out on social media the things yeah. that they're doing to you know to stay fit yeah it's it's become a grassroots kind of mm -hmm. effort that's neat um, so what do you see happening, you know, come fall and spring with sports, especially, you know, of course, everybody's wondering, you know, what's really happening with yeah. college football and um, what, what's your insight into that? I mean, it's great to see college football trying to move forward. I mean, you had the Big Ten and the Pac-12 have come out and said that they're not going to have a football season in the fall. They want to hopefully play it in the spring, which is you know, that's, I'll be interested to see how that plays out because you have the other three Power Five conferences going on to play in the fall. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that works out. But when it comes to college football, especially the big conferences and the Power Five, they have the money to do the testing that they need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that the world just needs college football. You know, <laughs> I mean, like everybody is just praying that it works out. Yeah. and. You know, they have been doing their workouts. That stuff has begun and they're still moving forward with it. Um, it's a little nerve wracking to see now that the colleges are, are back, you know, just the students are back on campus. Mm -hmm. I know the University of Alabama reported over 600 positive cases in a week. So it's scary to see that there are outbreaks on the campus, um, but the athletes seem, you know, to be a little bit more monitored and tested and a little bit more safe from that they're having to be more responsible if they go out and they do something and get COVID that can yeah. affect the rest of the team and that could domino effect in turn cancel the entire college football season right. so I think everybody is feeling the responsibility on them to stay within the guidelines that they're given um, but it's so great to see it moving forward and we just pray that that it keeps moving forward right. because we just need college football. We need yeah, it. Especially here in the South. <laughs> I know, I know. We live and breathe it. I can't imagine what it would be like. So fingers crossed that it's coming. Absolutely. Um, so what is the best thing that's happened to you since COVID? I know you talked about your reflection and yeah. what is the best thing? <laughs> I mean, honestly, the best thing that has happened is the way that my faith has been able to grow in this time. Um, I have never had I've, I, with working in baseball there's 162 games in the regular season and I was working anywhere between 130 to 150 of those for the last four years so right. for six months I don't there's nothing else in my life you know it is just baseball mm -hmm. and I think I really just allowed my my career and my job to become my identity that was all I knew 
that was all I cared about. That was all I thought about. I lived and breathed it. Mm -hmm. um, that job literally was my life. And then when it's ripped from you as suddenly as mine was, and I was so blindsided by it, you kind of feel like you just, you lost everything. I mean, right. you know, and you have, you have nothing to stand on because that is all you stood on for your entire time with that job. Right. And I had never realized that. And you can't build your identity on something that's unstable because the second yeah. that it starts to shake, everything starts to shake. So I've been able to see that that's what I did and build my identity and my foundation back up on something much sturdier that will not shake. Um, yeah. And that has been such a, such a blessing for me to be able to have that time to be able to, one, even realize that and two, do it, and three, have the time to cement it. You know, it's not just a passing thought. Um, and I'm doing other things to stay busy. Right now I'm studying to become a certified nutritionist. Um, oh, no. I really love working yeah. out and um, I have never really been taught proper nutrition. I right. grew up an athlete, so you have a base foundation of knowledge of that. But So it's yeah. been cool to just, you know, get a little bit outside of what what you're used to doing and explore some new things. Um, so I think those have been very positive things, just to slow down a little bit and have time to learn, right. you know? Wow, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. So uh, what additional advice do you have for our viewers? What, what do you have to say to, that can inspire and, and encourage somebody? I think the, the biggest thing that we all have to realize is every single person is battling something right now and mental health has been put on such a big platform because everybody not just people in the sports industry not just people in your industry people in every single industry have been forced to completely stop and slow down and that's really tough for a lot of people so i think just constantly reminding yourself that we are all facing these battles and trying to extend a little bit more grace and a little bit more kindness and being receptive to finding what you should be learning in this season and just finding positives and being still and having time with your family and friends that you might not have had even though it's it seems like it's been so long and it's so difficult and we're all just ready for it to get back to normal if you're just sitting there thinking about all the negative things you're going to be miserable you know but if you try to find positive spins and just being able to slow down a little bit and catch your breath and breathe and reorganize your closet or spend more time <laughs> with your kids or go home I know I got three months with my parents back home in Houston and I don't know what other point in my life I'm gonna be able to go home right. and just be with my parents and my mom and I did the same puzzle like 15 times you know I mean like it's <laughs> but you know it, it was just you you're so grateful for all of that yeah. um, so I think hopefully people now have we've all been able to go through the pity we're so this is miserable we're so angry like we just wanted to get back to normal and now this is the new normal right. and things are starting to go back open but I just hope people can take that negative mentality that I'm sure we all had in the beginning and start understanding that there's a purpose in the season and um, just realize that every person is dealing with something and every person is struggling with this and just trying to extend a little bit more grace yeah. and kindness. That's awesome. That's great advice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being on interviews from the backseat. I really appreciate it. Um, you've been, I'm sure, an inspiration to some of our viewers and you, thank you. certainly to me. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, if um, any of you are watching from ESPN or <laughs> Fox Sports or uh, kind of the college Shout football, out. MLB, <laughs> anybody, uh, she's available and she is excellent. I'm ready. So. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So not a problem. <laughs> so thank you so much again. Um, so check back with us for more interviews from the back seat. And remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, friend us on Facebook, connect with us on LinkedIn, and follow us on Instagram. And until next time, be encouraged and make a difference.